This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. Click the Fight TV link on WrestlingMayhemShow.com to support this show and watch pro wrestling, MMA, boxing, and so much more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash WrestlingMayhemShow. Hey guys, it is the Indie Mayhem Show talk. Blah, 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 blah. Let's try it again. That's what I get for trying to do two of these in a row. Hey guys, it is the Indie Mayhem Show. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA. But we got a lot of people all over the place joining us today. A very exciting Lucha Underground and hopefully a little bit more themed episode. A uh, fun, fun interview ahead of us. But first of all, please check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Subscribe to the Indie Mayhem Show on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, as well as the video versions over on uh, the Facebook and the uh, YouTube page for the Wrestling Mayhem Show. And, of course, follow that Facebook page because you never know where we're going to pop up with these interviews that you guys can participate and see who we're chatting with this week and become part of that conversation. Like we got Brandon and Donald out there right now uh, hanging out in the live stream that we just do it on a random Wednesday that's just a couple hours before the uh, mid-season premiere of Lucha Underground. So it's very timely as far as that goes. Um, and also, please drop us a line. Let us know who you think we should be uh, talking with or if you see we have an event up on our Facebook page of somebody we're talking with in the coming weeks. Um, drop us a line and, and, and questions uh, over at goodtimesatwrestlingmayhemshow.com or 412-206-WMS0. And thank you so much, everybody that's supporting us or intends to support us over at patreon.com slash wrestlingmayhemshow.com mayhem show you get a little bit of uh, extra content at different levels there and other kind of uh, goodies that we try to do for our fans here and, and it's really appreciating it uh, and supporting the network here at wrestlingmayhemshow.com we have a very special guest well first of all we have i have some co-interviewers hanging out with me because i always need some help because i'm classically late at the lucha underground party uh, i just bought season three I know, just in time for the mid-season uh, uh, update of, of Lucha Underground. Uh, but with this, uh, you know, classically from the midweek war, our in-house Lucha Underground experts, conspirators, and analyzers of trailers. First of all, Mad Mike up there in Poughkeepsie, New York, joining yes, us. Indeed. Oh, Sorg, I'm ready to talk about Lucha all night long, all night. Oh, I don't, I don't think I blocked out enough time for that. Also with us is, of course, uh, our friend in the mainstream media returning, because what, 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 what's going to bring him? He was in the hibernation post-Mayhem Mania, and he had no Lucha Underground to watch, and he's back on with us, Matt Carlin's mainstream Matt. Yes, it's been about a minute. I was in my sweeps mode hibernation uh, for the month, but I'm back. I'm free. Free to roam wild again, and uh, just in time for us to come out of sweeps mode. Uh, so Lucha Underground is back, and it's very exciting. Excellent. And, of course, our, our guest this week, uh, executive producer of Lucha Underground. He's the name on the marquee, uh, Eric Van Wagenen, joining us. Thank you so much for joining us here from uh, the left coast there. Well, thank you guys for having me. I'm a fan of the Midweek War. Uh, Mike, I didn't get the announcement. Um, but uh, it's just great to be oh, talking wait. about a new episode of Lucha wait, Underground. You mean the announcement for the mid week? Oh. <laughs> now we may begin. It's okay. I'm a trained <laughs> monkey like that. I, I can do I can do anything you require for more Lucha Underground. <laughs> <laughs> it's my favorite start. <laughs> yeah, yeah you, you did do that uh, to me when I met you at New York Comic Con, which just blew my hair back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just sad Antonio's not here to do the Spanish. Oh, like, no. Mirianos de Samana. <laughs> He's he is, actually in the chat room. He has, he has a he has question. question. We do. We have questions oh, right off the bat. Well, why isn't he here? <laughs> um, he, he hasn't been able to come on just uh, randomly. He's on a 30 day suspension. Kinda. We we found him doing some inappropriate things with the Lucha Underground posters. No, I'm kidding. Oh, I'm kidding. Oh, <laughs> oh, he is a good artist. He is a wonderful artist. So, uh, yes. well, first of all, on this show we like to have you know maybe for people that haven't fallen and jumped on uh, the, our midweek core bandwagon here. Um, we have a little bit of icebreaker here on the Indie Mayhem show. Is uh, uh, you know what what is your earliest memory of pro wrestling? Oh, that's um, my earliest memory. That's a good question. Um, 
when I was like seven years old, and I grew up in Los Angeles, and they used to have uh, in LA, there was Channel 52, which was a UHF channel. And uh, they used to have, um, uh, I think it was uh, Hollywood Championship Wrestling or, or California. I don't remember what the federation was, but the it was the Guerrero family. And I remember a young Roddy Piper came in, uh, you know, they, how they used to work the uh, territories back then. And Roddy Piper came to L.A. and um, had huge, like, program with the Guerreros. I mean, he was like the nastiest heel of them all. And, uh, uh, and we're talking about all these guys that have passed. It's kind of sad now that I think about it. But but I remember watching um, week after week that program develop with Rowdy Roddy Piper and um, uh, Chavo Sr., Chavo Classic, Amando. And, and it was, he. you know, he in L.A., he was just so evil. And he was just such a bad guy. And I remember that you know, when they wanted back then, when the programs would come to an end, they would always have the loser leave town match. And they had that all set up at the Olympic auditorium um, with, uh, I think it was Chavo Classic and Piper. And I remember going to my dad at the time and saying, Dad, please, I, I know you don't like this show that I watch every every Saturday morning, but can we please go to the Olympic Auditorium? My dad being a good, good decent guy, you didn't take your children to the Olympic Auditorium in 1975. It just didn't happen. Uh, and so I just remember him looking at me and just shaking his head going, son, that stuff's all fake. Why do you even bother? <laughs> I just remember seven-year-old Eric was crushed in that moment. But uh, that is my earliest wrestling memory. But probably um, I do re also remember being in the audience for WrestleMania two at the L.A. Sports Arena wow. um, when they had it in the three different cities. Yeah. And I got to see the Hogan King Kong Bundy cage match live from the L.A. Sports Arena. Those how, are two I, good ones. How were, was were it you watching enough how? that we can, uh, you know, go on the network and, and look for you in the crowd. Is there a young Eric yeah. lurking in the crowd somewhere in the background? Yeah, I don't think my 14-year-old self, self could afford a very good ticket, so I'm pretty sure I was <laughs> I was high up. How, how was it watching the rest of that show on, like, monitors before it got to the live stuff? It was on big, giant screen. And I think in L.A., because we were on the West Coast, we were the last one. Yep. So we watched everything uh, up to that point. Just they had um, four, like a big four sided screen. And so you just watched it. It was probably, you know, 30 feet high and they, they projected it onto it, if, if I remember correctly. And then they, when they took the screens down, the, the ring was inside. Um, so, so, you know, we watched it. I actually watched WrestleMania 1 from the same place, from inside the sports arena. It was before you could do pay per view. So you had to do closed circuit and you'd have to buy a ticket to a theater or a sports arena and you'd go watch it. So WrestleMania one I bought a ticket for but watched it on closed circuit television from the sports arena. So for people who aren't old enough to remember that far back, like yeah, what, sorry. what's the vibe like when those you're in that closed circuit show? Is it is it like an arena kind of crowd? Is yeah, that I mean people were definitely into it. I mean the the, the sports arena um, back then, and now we're talking the early '80s. At this point, it, it's it's pretty much the shittiest sports arena in America. Um, it really ought to be torn down. I, I think it's been sort of it's gone feral at this point. I think the rats have taken it over. But it was it was a it, it's a pretty shitty arena, and uh, the the wrestling crowd back then was not exactly highbrow. It was during that whole transition where 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 Vince was um, you know making. Um, the WWF at the time, uh, you know, a nationwide promotion and all the territories were being absorbed. So, um, you know, it had a little bit of the kind of uh, early 80s carny crowd, but, but it, you know, um, it couldn't have been that bad. I mean, you know, we were safe and we were just, you know, 12, 13, 14 there by ourselves. So we, it, it was fun. It was a good it was a good time. Have you ever thought about maybe doing something like that for Lucha? Doing like what? Like 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 a projection screen? Like going like going to? Uh, I thought you were about to say to a show at the Olympic. I'm almost no, that. no, but like <laughs> like do like a closed circuit thing, like air an episode of Lucha, like like a watch party for people who don't. Have, for, yeah, like a watch party, like for people who don't have the El Rey Network. I know. I sort of feel like El Rey Network sometimes is our own little close closed circuit broadcast. <laughs> um, <laughs> but that's not to slam the. I love El Rey. They're, they're they're the greatest. Make sure to watch their new programming next week. <laughs> um, but, uh, 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 but, uh, yeah, no, you know, it's funny because when we were first starting Lucha, we, we had this big debate as to, 
um, do we have some way for the audience uh, in the arena to watch the vignettes? And it would have meant probably a very completely different way of presenting the, the product. But, you know, the decision was, you know, we like to take credit and think we were all these creative geniuses, but it was real. That one was a financial decision. We just didn't have time. Um, we didn't have, I mean, the, the, the temple was, was very, um, we put that together on a very tight budget and uh, we just didn't have time to, to have build in a projection system or, or monitors so that the audience could, could watch along with the promos. So we just, that was a purely financial decision to cut the audience out of the, the backstage elements and let them see it um, in the final broadcast and, and not while we're shooting the show. Hmm. Hmm. Wow. Yeah, because I was at um, San Diego Comic Con a few years ago, and Robert mm-hmm. Rodriguez actually hosted an outdoor party because he was showing uh, like eight minutes or something like that of Machete. Yes, I saw that. I, I yeah, I went to it. Now I didn't go to the San Diego one, but he had one in Hollywood too. It was okay. like a was that Happy Sock Short or something like that? Something, something like that. Yeah, because he like took out um, just basically a parking garage, like a parking lot. And just, it looks like they just bought the whole thing up. They filled it full of classic cars, girls dancing on poles. Like a drive through or yeah. drive in theater. Yeah, basically. You could get free shots of tequila, free beer, free tacos, and Michelle Rodriguez was DJing the whole thing. Oh, and man, that, is why, wow. that is why El Rey Network is the greatest. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I'm serious. Like, with the wrestling vibe that goes on at San Diego, you guys should do that for an episode of Lucha Underground. Absolutely. It's not. Is it, 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 I like it. Maybe, maybe, maybe uh, 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 Johnny Mundo live performancing his uh, his, his music oh, video. Oh, live performance of Black <laughs> we, we, do, we could do that in the parking lot of, uh, of the the temple. I mean, Sorg, you were there. Yeah, the yeah. parking lot. Actually, there was there was there was a time when we were debating with the idea of uh, of putting on like um, you know before the show tapes to try to draw the audience in putting on like a little Lucha festival just outside in the parking lot and having, you know, um, some extra AAA guys come up and put on a show and sort of turning it into a whole sort of East LA carnival, uh, carnival, um, right there in the parking lot. Is there a huge parking lot that's attached to the temple? So, yeah. um, but you know, like I, I, it I, turned I, out we, we didn't need to coax people to come to our tapings. No, no. <laughs> I already like the vibe out there. Um, uh, you know, uh, you know, because there's, there's, there's the taco truck and everything. Like it's, it's, it's like, I'm like, do I want, really like want, a, do a I really movie out there? It's yeah. Crazy. Yeah. It's it great. Like, you get a contact high just walking through. The <laughs> <parking lot. laughs> God bless California. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> Um, so I want to I want to touch on here. Of course, you know Lucha Underground. You know I'm looking at you know you're, you're of course involved with Celebrity Apprentice. Uh, you know you have uh, you have ro- had roles in The Amazing Race and in, in, in the Ken Tentner, uh and, and then leading into some other kind of wrestling based things. Has wrestling from that early the days watching at the Coliseum uh, uh, always been a thread and a goal for you in in your work and in, in getting into production? Uh, you know. It, it, it sort of found its way kind of back in a very strange sort of way. Um, you know, obviously having grown up and, and, and used to watch the, the local promotion here in, in Los Angeles and then been exposed to the, the early days of the WWF uh, and then kind of fell away as a fan and, and didn't really follow it for a lot of the years. Um, I'd say from the mid 80s, you know, till I worked with Steve Austin in 2011. So that, you know, that was kind of a long time away from it. But, um, I, you know, I've always sort of loved um, sort of the prison. I've always loved combat sports and I've always kind of loved to, uh, you know, and when you mix with when you talk about reality television, um, uh, you know, reality television and wrestling have a lot in common. I mean, you, if you sit and think about it, it's kind of like, you know, as reality producers, you're telling stories and um you know, in wrestling, they're basically in a wrestling match, you're telling a story. And sometimes you use production tricks uh, and magic tricks to make stories more interesting, to make characters more, um, more polarizing, to make them uh, uh, funnier and wittier and, and, and better or more evil than they are naturally. And so there, there's a little bit of, I, you know, I have found that the psychology of how you um, bring an audience along uh, is there's a lot of overlap with reality television and wrestling. And so um, it, it, it felt like a pretty 
a, a pretty good fit. And, you know, having worked on Contender and some of these other things and, you know, Survivor and Apprentice, um, when you put stakes, when there, whenever there's stakes in something, um, you know, there's natural drama that's there. Um, and, and so, you know, wrestling is all always about that. You know, it's always about creating stakes and, and having a winner and a loser and somebody moves on and somebody goes home. And it's, you know, it, it's got it's got a lot of the similar themes. Um, and, and, you know, some would argue that it's equally as manipulated. Um, but I think that sort of depends on, you know, what, what show you're watching and what wrestling promotion you're watching. But but but, you know, there's something about people getting punched in the face or getting knocked down or getting um, uh, uh risking injury which i find you know sickly compelling and, and so um I'll, I'll do the mainstream reality shows but my love is with this sort of um uh, subculturally subculture weirdness and, and you know with mma and boxing and and professional wrestling so so yeah I, I, it's fun for me i really enjoy it all right um so i now one of the other shows you worked on was legends house yes um great what what was that how did you even get involved in that like how how did that how did that call like did someone just call you up and say hey do you want to film a lot of old wrestlers in an old house (laughs) that was a strange uh that was kind of a strange strange pitch i just finished um the stone cold steve austin tough enough Mm. and uh Everybody that I dealt with at WWE was under the impression, um, because the ratings on the Stone Cold Steve Austin one were really quite good. I think it was the second highest debuting um, cable, um, uh, new cable uh, show that year. I think, you know, behind like American Pickers or something weird like that. And so uh, uh, USA was very happy with, um, uh, with the numbers that we did for that show. So we were, we were all under the impression that we were going to, um, pick it back up again and do that show right away. What I come to find out is, is that, you know, there was, there was bigger negotiations going on about moving raw from two hours to three hours. And, you know, the big debate was would the wrestling audience stick around for three hours as opposed to two hours. Well, that tough enough season kind of showed the executives at, at USA that, yeah, they probably will stick around for three hours if you give them a three hour show. So it was much cheaper to just extend um, um, tough enough I mean, I'm sorry, extend Raw by an hour than it is to do an original programming of, of Tough Enough. Tough Enough was a lot more expensive than just, you know, a, a, an extra 45 minutes from a live event. Um, so, so I think the decision got made to, instead of, um, instead of doing another season of Tough Enough, uh, uh, that they would just extend Raw. And so what to do with all of us that were hanging around. And so they, they, they said, I remember it was uh, um, uh, uh uh, big John Grabowski called and he said, "Well, we can't do Tough Enough yet, but or, but we want to do the show Legends House." And uh, they flew me and my partner to uh, Connecticut, and they you know sat us down and said, "This is what we want to do." And and uh, you know my first instinct is, "How do you do a reality show where the youngest person is like sixty years old?" <laughs> the oldest person is like seventy five, <laughs> and uh, uh, that was my big fear: is how do you how do you make these old guys um interesting you know we you have like they're all gonna go to bed at 7 30 at night you know, so, <laughs> you know and uh it, it was it was interesting because we had a lot of really crazy ideas to, to to have them do you know we had some really bizarre stuff um a lot of the people that worked on uh, tough enough and a lot of people that work on lucha underground also worked on legends house so there's some twisted minds there we had some really crazy activities that we were that we had all lined up and then they kind of came in and said no nah, that one's not safe and now nah, someone will have a heart attack and now we can't do this and so and so is a cancer survivor and like i mean there was like a million reasons why we couldn't do uh a, a lot of the activities that we had to do but but you know, the principle of uh, reality, house reality shows is always just, you know, just add alcohol and you'll get good reality. And that's pretty much, we, pretty much the formula we followed. Um, but there was a lot of other things that were floating around that house at the time, too. So uh, it wasn't just booze, uh, booze infused. So, so needless no, to say, there were, there was, oh, well, yeah, yeah no, it's back here real quick, because uh, Eric said something there a few minutes ago. And I just want to make sure that we're clear on this. So... Are you saying that it's your fault that we're getting three-hour Monday Night Raw every week? 
I wanted you to have Steve Austin for the third hour. That was always my goal. <laughs> that sounds great. Okay. Yeah, that sounds amazing. I mean, because, I mean, I think it's interesting that like they they took what, what you guys were doing and they used that as proof that that people would and, run and like, of, is, of wrestling. But uh, at least in my experience, a lot of the original, a lot of the reality stuff for WWE is kind of uh, it, it kind of slants not straight toward the hardcore wrestling audience. And I'm not sure if that's something you noticed on top enough, but. Yeah, you know, it, it's, a, it's a hard thing, you know, um, and, and look, I, that, that was my theory, okay? I don't want anybody to, to start printing that, that, you know, that that's truth. You know, I just know that we hung around and we hung around and we hung around waiting to do another season of Tough Enough, and then all of a sudden Raw got bumped to three hours and they put me on Legends House. So I, I was just connecting my own dots and thought maybe that was what, what it was, but I wasn't involved in any of those negotiations between USA and, and WWE. So um, that's just clearly a theory. Um, but uh, what, 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 what were we saying? What was the original question? What were you saying? Well, I was just uh, just talking about um, how some other reality shows based on wrestling. I'm oh, right. Thinking out of the top of my head, like Total Divas, Total Bellas. Those don't go straight for that hardcore audience. They slant toward, you know, different yeah, segments. And, 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 I probably, that. You know, and I think, you know, I mean, you tell me, it feels like if it's wrestling related, wrestling fans will, will watch it sometimes just because they want to bitch about it. Um, so the, the hardcore fans, you know, the, the, that hardcore group, they'll pretty much watch anything wrestling related, I think, you know, or they'll, they'll, at least they have a much higher tolerance. Um, and I think, um, you know, the goal probably, my guess is, is to bring, bring in new um, audience and younger audience. I think that, that um, the young female demographic is a really hard one to grab. And so that's probably why Total Divas is there. But, you know, when I do what's, uh, you know, I specialize probably in what's called competition reality. Or, I mean, yeah, competition reality where it's, you know, you're, you're, you're narrowing it down and you're giving a winner. You know, someone gets eliminated every week kind of thing. And, you know, my thought with that is, is, is if you're doing, um, if, you're, if you're, you know, trying to pick somebody uh, to be the next big star in a sport that everybody knows is scripted, that, that the reality show has to be as authentic as we can possibly do it. And so, you know, our attitude was is, is, is really pull back the curtain as much as they'll let us pull back the cor- curtain and, and don't let anybody, um, you know, don't make the audience feel like they're being worked when they're watching a reality show. Um, and so that, you know, that's kind of what we try to do. And Steve was on board with that. And I think, you know, um, probably, you know, all credit goes to if anybody – if there was any credibility to that season, season, I think it, I think Steve deserves all the credit for it because you know, as you can see from other seasons, you know, it's not about just throwing star power at it. It's sometimes it's about picking the right person who gives it, you know, legitimacy. And, and I felt like Steve did that from the very first episode. Whose idea was it to have the um, the Austin segment at the end where he just kind of like rips into everyone was that something from wwe or is that something from you guys is that something from uh, well, you know the other show on my resume is is the apprentice and it, you know <laughs> and, and what's, what's funny is so basically is, you, you know, just wanted wwe hall of famer harassing people <laughs> exactly so i actually i actually <laughs> sent steve i think some um episodes of uh, the apprentice and i said watch how donald when he gets you know when he narrows it down to the final three watch how donald just goes in there and he you know, he messes with everybody and he swings the, the momentum swings back and forth between people. Watch how he tortures people. And then he'll point it at one person, point at one person, point at one person, then swing it back and get the other guy. And like, it, it was loosely based on that, you know, but I, I, you know, having produced a lot of different uh, talent and there was no, I actually think Steve was better than, than I think Steve was better than Trump. He certainly required a lot less editing. I, th- um, I think he's probably better than Trump at a lot of different jobs. <laughs> yeah. I, I remember the first time he did it, and, and, I, and I just kept saying to him, Steve, if you stay there long enough and you just uh, do whatever you can to unnerve them, and I said, just it, it, somebody will fuck up so bad that it will be obvious, and the choice you will have no choice but to fire that person. I said, trust the process. You know, if it takes – 30 minutes. Great. If it takes two hours, we got, you know, tape is cheap. We'll stay there as long as we need to. <laughs> and, and as long as you, you know, feel the need to it. And he just really embraced it. Like he would come out sometimes and he would just stand out there and he would stare and, and it, <laughs> it would go on like five minutes. 
And five minutes when Steve Austin is staring at you is incredibly uncomfortable. <laughs> I was really uncomfortable. I was standing off stage and it made me like, it made me nervous. And I, I knew what he was doing. And so, you know, then when you go in the edit, you cut that five minute chunk of staring out, but you've got all that great energy in the room and you've got these, uh, you know, these, these bottom three uh, wrestlers who, you know, who are shitting themselves before Steve even says the thing. And like, I still remember the, the very first episode, you know, it was going a while and he was going back and forth and he was going back and forth. And, and then, you know, he started to, he came up with this great thing of like, tell me your favorite match, you know, <laughs> and, <laughs> and, you know, Eric Watts was, you know, locked and loaded with uh, Shawn Michaels and Undertaker. And, you know, the, the other woman who, uh, I forget who the other person was, had a, ma- had a match like right there. And then poor Arian, who, you know, had been involved with WWE and wrestling for about five minutes before we shot that show. Uh, well, uh, versus Malia Alicia, Alicia Fox. Fox. And, and that reaction was so pure. And it was so, and it, nothing wrong with, Melina or Alicia Fox, I've met them both, and they're lovely. But but and like, their match was actually pretty good. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like not for nothing, um, that match is actually not bad. <laughs> <laughs> if you've only seen three, I guess you know that that might be. Um, but but his reaction was so pure, and I remember he just gave me this little sly look, you know, off camera of like, yeah, that's our moment. That's when we do it. And it, you know, and I gave him that. I gave him the thumbs up and you know, then it was, then it was off to the races. And then that's just, you know, we built on it. I mean, he, he legitimately got better and better and better every season and why they didn't find a way to tie him in and keep doing that show with him as the host. I, I, it is one of the great mysteries to me. Uh, all right. Uh, so now getting back to legends house, you're kind of implying that there's no wellness policy going on at legends house. So well, we were in well, California. Was like some of the craziest things that happened there. Well, you know, it, there was there was some legit stuff. You know, Piper really actually did try to escape um, <laughs> uh, on the first night, and it was funny. Because I was actually dealing with Gary Busey in a nearby hotel because <laughs> he was coming on the next day, and and I was in full Gary Busey mode, and he is a crazy like what you see of Gary Busey, and I love Gary. I, you know, he did The Apprentice and. And I loved him on that, but 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 uh, uh, he was he was I was just like losing my mind in this hotel room. You know, I he showed up and he didn't have a credit card, and so I had to put my own personal card down uh, for Gary Busey in this in this hotel room, and I was freaking out. And and I got a I got a call, and I, and I kept you know denying the call, and I could, it was from one of my producers. About the fifth time, I'm like, I better take this call, and so I jump out in the hallway, and I'm like, Nick, what is it? And he goes, I've lost Piper. He's in the <laughs> desert. <laughs> I don't know where he is. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I was like, Gary, I got to run, man. I got to get out of here. So I jumped in the car and run back to the house. Luckily, it was close by. And, you know, Piper finally came back and, and I pulled him aside. I'm like, Piper, you, you, you can't you can't just leave like that. Where were you going? He's like, I had nowhere to go. So I just came back. I got lost. And he, he was literally out in the middle of nowhere. And, and <laughs> He, he was just wandering off into into the nothingness of uh, Palm Desert, and uh, um, and, and he came back because there was nowhere for him to go. And then I was just like, please, what do you need? And we'll, we'll make sure that you're happy and that you can uh, that you don't have to <laughs> don't have to leave. But it was a constant chore to keep that guy in the house and to keep him um, um, you know, keep him happy. But I, I loved Roddy. I mean, I I think from that whole experience. Um, I, I became closest to Roddy and, and, and we were friends until he passed away. Um, and I just, I, I had so much respect for him and I, and, you know, he'd been through so much and he was such an interesting and complex and, and funny, funny, funny. And I think, you know, um, he had a hard time being Roddy Piper, um, um, because the, the real, you know, Roddy was just such a sweetheart and a nice guy. And, uh, you know, he had some demons, but, but he's one of the people I will always remember from that show was the, you know, hanging out with him and getting to be friends with him. Uh, was, was there any like other fun stuff from, cause I remember like, didn't you guys have them do a car wash? Yeah. And <laughs> yeah, we did, and they had to make a commercial for it. And, uh, you know, there was a lot of these like tasks that we just kind of like, um, our task producer was my apprentice task producer. And so she was coming up with a lot of the same stuff. I mean, we had some crazy stuff. We were going to have him take over a morning show at a local uh, uh, affiliate, a TV affiliate. And that got kiboshed 
unfortunately, because they didn't want to spoil anything. And then we were we had them registered in a um, like a smash up derby, like one of those crash <laughs> crash derby cars, and they were going to each have a car, and they were going to throw they were going to go at each other. But they, so so you were actually going to recreate WWE Crush Hour. Pretty much, I think, with a bunch of seven-year-olds. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, that got that got killed as well. Um, uh, but yeah, they had to do squares, and they would get really mad at each other. I mean, Pat Patterson had uh, had the shortest uh, fuse of anybody, and he he would just get so furious, and and he would fight with uh, Jimmy Hart all the time. Everybody hated Tony Atlas. It, it was just like. You know, I felt so bad for poor Tony. He got picked on so much in that house. And think uh, Howard Finko got picked on a lot. And uh, <laughs> there were times where you just wanted to pull him out for an interview because it was so uncomfortable sitting and watching them get abused by each other. I mean, there was some – those guys <laughs> Those guys are – that's a rough room uh, when they get a couple of drinks in them and they start picking on each other. It, it could be pretty brutal. Oh, man. Jeez. Uh, um <laughs> I had a question. I just lost it. Um, well, that's okay. I'll jump in. Yeah, all right. um, if you don't mind, I, I, yeah. I feel like we have to talk about Lucha at least a little bit. Um, sure. <laughs> yes. But, and I feel like first thing I, well, I, 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 I wanted to get I wanted to get some of the some of the legends up out, out of the way before we talk about Lucha. Um, just right off the bat, like just Netflix. What, what, what's that meant for you guys? What, what's going on? And how, how successful has that been for you guys? You know the. The, the the thing about Netflix is is they're very uh, they're sort of like you know Willy Wonka's chocolate factory. They don't tell you how things are do- doing, and then there's <laughs> they keep a lot of secrets. You know, they just pump out television, and uh, nobody nobody knows uh, if we're doing well or not. It, it seems you know it it, uh, it seems like we're doing well. Um, I, I noticed that a lot of um, uh, you know we're we're getting a lot more sort of traffic on our websites and the merch sales are up and um you know there's a lot of things that are that are sort of feeding you know the overall show uh which is what we wanted you know which was which is um always the goal when you uh put a show on netflix is that it actually helps it doesn't draw away from your broadcast audience that it actually helps feed your broadcast audience so you know we'll know we'll know tonight you know or we'll know tomorrow or we'll know in the next uh a uh, few weeks, if the Netflix effect um, helps our show or not, I'm I'm genuinely optimistic that, it, that I think it will. Um, but you know, we have a, a, a two season deal there, and I think that's two seasons um, is is uh, partially uh, for you know our, our our doing because if we do well and if they're happy with it and if the 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 ratio of viewers to cost is good, then we can hopefully ask for more money, um, you know, in subsequent seasons. So. Um, keep watching Netflix. It's a great way to see the show. And for me, you know, I, I have direct TV, but, and so, uh, you know, the El Rey network is not in HD. So it's fun for me to go back and see him in HD again. If, if you've only been watching the direct TV feed. It has been a lot of fun to watch those early episodes. Cause I mean, yeah, you're right. El Rey was very hard to find, especially at the beginning. And some of us went to a, uh, you know, uh, certain lengths to, to keep up with the show. That no judgment, no, no judgment here. As, as long as you uh, those early episodes are they, they make me cringe you know sometimes those early episodes when i see like you know some of the lighting and 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 the, the audience and some of the you know some of the some of the stuff just uh you can really see us kind of uh staggering our way through it and you know each episode for the first 10 you see dramatic changes and it's you know look as a tv producer you you have to be proud of the direction that those episodes go and you have to you know you look incrementally at at, okay, yeah, we fixed that by episode three, and we fixed that by episode nine. But you know, the, obviously, if you if you if you if you had your druthers, you'd have it you know locked and loaded and perfect by the time you roll on the first one. But you know, hey, that's just the nature of wrestling. And most shows, if you go back and look at the early season, you know, first few episodes, you'll find the exact same um, progression. So um, it's, it is fun, but but I like it once that season gets going. Yeah, I was I was amazed to see how much of the floor we could actually see in the first episode. <laughs> we, we, yeah, that was a, that was a very stressful weekend. I mean, you know, I look at the guy. It was like, you know, we got the call like Thursday that uh, three of our our guys from Mexico couldn't get across the border, and we were at, we were doing everything we could. You know, they didn't have the right visas. They couldn't get. They we couldn't figure out a way to get them in the U.S. and then. Um, you know, the audience showed up and they were, you know, we'd had 
you know, we were expecting like 300 or I had RSVP, but only like a hundred showed up. So we had like two hours and I'm like, we're literally, everybody's calling their families and their friends to just come here and sit in the audience. We need people. And, and uh, so we had to, we had to scrap all the ringside seats for the first two episodes. Uh, and then, you know, once we started to figure out, okay, um, we got a good return. Like, like we noticed that the same people were coming back again and again and again. And it wasn't like people tried it, stopped coming. It was actually people tried it and they brought more friends the next time. So, um, and then once it had been on the air, like when I think it was episode 17 or 18, which we taped after the first few had aired, um, then it was like, it was a different level. It was, we were turning people, we were turning hundreds of people away. So, um, you know, it was just those rough few tapings. So we're grateful to all the, and there are fans who are there on day one that are still there, you know, season three, almost season four later. And like not having that, that traditional wrestling feedback. I know we've talked to Chris about this, like for those first 15 episodes, like who was like examining the way things were going and, and kind of where was that, where were you drawing from to, to fine tune and, and make improvements and, and just kind of uh, make it know, better? I, I, you know, I, I rely on Chris and, you know, his team to, to be the wrestling audience. You know, I can look at something from a TV producer, you know, when having worked with Mark Burnett and, you know, for 15 years, you know, if something feels slow or something, the lighting doesn't look right or the coloring doesn't look right or the audio mixing is bad or the, the, the sound editing is bad. Like I can look, I can pick apart the elements of a TV show and, and that's sort of, you know, I spent, I spent uh, 12 years of my career as an editor. Um, so, you know, the fact that it's so heavily post-produced that that's probably because, you know, I was given the show to, to, to put it together. I wanted it to be a, a post-produced show um, and, and for it to, to have a lot of the creative elements that only an edit bay can bring. Um, but as far as like the wrestling fans, it was Chris and, you know, uh, Chris Roach and Matt Stolman and a couple of sort of, there were some wrestling fans that were on our roster. I mean, that were like a, a part of the show. Like we, you know, a couple of cameramen were, you know, pretty hardcore wrestling fans and our social media guy, who, you know, at the time was a, uh, you know, I knew a couple of guys that were hardcore wrestling fans and I showed it to them. But, you know, the, the idea was, it, you know, it seemed so different that um, everybody went home the day that it aired and it was about, we were about 50, 50 split. We were like 50% of us thought we were tanking and 50% of us thought we were going to do great. So, you know, we, we were shocked that the feedback was, you know, mostly good. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I, uh, I, mean, I, remember, I mean, just from the, the first few episodes and just, I would just immediately like shocked I was by like how different, the, the the presentation was um so yeah it was yeah. and, and the, you know the the skip scenes you know um skip chasen who directs our um uh, our, our vignettes and the character pieces and he did that cold open if you if you go back to the first episode and watch the first four minutes five minutes like to me as an editor i looked at that and i was like this is like a masterpiece this is just perfect i'm like it's so well edited it's so well scored it's lit so well uh it's shot so well um, that I, I looked at it just from an artistic point of view and I, I couldn't get my head around uh, that, you know, will, will the wrestling fans like it or not, you know, as a TV producer and somebody who enjoys well-produced television across any genre, um, I, I just had so much respect for what Skip had done. And, you know, people were like, Oh, you need to get to the wrestling quicker. You need to cut it. You need to shorten that down. And my, my attitude is like, that is so much production value wrapped into that first five minutes. Please don't, let's not change a frame. Let's just see, let's just, let's put it out there and see what people think. Because, you know, I felt like we owed it to Skip to, to not mess with his stuff. Um, because, you know, the guy is, is um, unusually talented and, and I've worked with a lot of very talented people and, and he's right up there at the top. So, um, you know, we're incredibly lucky to have him and um, you know, he has a way of, uh, of taking the stuff that that Chris writes and 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 really bringing it to life, and um, you know it's a great team and it's 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 a really fun process, um, and you know El Rey is so supportive and they give us so few notes. I mean, I, you know, I, I joke all the time, you know, we've delivered 106 episodes now, and I think I've maybe gotten three notes from the El Rey network. Um, so so in television, and I know some of you guys work in production, that's so unheard of, it's almost laughable. 
Um, but, but, uh, um, you know, that's why we love the El Rey Network and we want to support them and we're grateful to them and sure watch it on Netflix, but uh, check out the programming on El Rey if you get a chance. Absolutely. Yeah, I remember I remember watching the first episode and realizing like, oh, this is something we're going to have to cover. Like, <laughs> it, it just draws yeah. you in immediately. Like, it sets you in the world. Because yeah. it's so, like world building is one <clears throat> yeah. of the most difficult things to do. Yeah. One of the most difficult and, things to do. And you guys like set the tone Right and away. a lot of that had been done uh, before, like early on. They had this whole development team, this IP uh, development team that they that they brought in very early, even before we were uh, producing the TV show, where they had created certain characters and they had worked on costumes and they had worked on, uh, you know, the idea of these different tribes. And, you know, they had worked on the, the aesthetic and, and, and they had tied in um, some of the... Uh, uh, sort of Aztec lore that existed um, that, that, you know, researchers had uncovered about, you know, temples and gods and, and legends and myths and things like that. And they had just sort of borrowed from some of that to, you know, create some of these other characters, you know, and, and I love it when fans actually, you know, take a name and they Google it and, or they, you know, they, they, they take a, a, uh, a god or, or one of our one of our characters and they they search it in aztec mythology and they find something you know it's like crazy stuff like you know spaceman on aztec temple you know it's like that explains aerostar you know like you know there are there are those little 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 easter eggs that we purposely put in there and we all we all geek out when somebody actually finds them well, that just gave me a whole new list of things for Google now. <laughs> oh, yeah. I figured out the whole Katrina thing uh, the other day, the Katrina with the sea. So, you know, somebody somebody uh, dug that out of uh, out of our show, and uh, that was fun to see. Oh, man. I saw that was so much- to do now. <laughs> I know. I can't tell you how many screen grabs I've been through on your show and just looking for something. <laughs> And then double really? back and, and then going back through episodes. And, and, and other are things, like you talk about the world building, the way, like, the supernatural element and and how, uh, especially early in season one, how just kind of like patient um, Chris and the rest of the team seemed to be about rolling that out, uh, where it, it didn't like hit you right over the head. And I, I'm not sure if this and, is and, you know, completely and I think part of that, yep. And part of that was really about what we were talking about before. When you don't know if something is going to get over or not, you have to be slow about it. You know, like, like I, th- I think that, that we were like, uh, okay, uh, um, can she really teleport? <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> like, uh, let, let's just put it in this one episode and then let's back off of it for a few episodes and see, <laughs> see what people think, you know, or, um, uh, you know, some of that, some of that kind of like supernatural, like the Mil Muertes thing, have we gone too far by having them be this child that, that died in this, uh, or that that was pinned under rubble in the Mexico City earthquake. Are we being insensitive by even <laughs> suggesting that kind of thing? And, and and you know the truth is is is, is um, people loved it, and, and uh, you know they love that kind of depth of character because it's not something you're used to seeing on a wrestling show. And but but I think we were all a little self conscious of it initially, and so um, being self conscious of it created this slow burn. Um, and, and then once we killed, you know, once we killed Bill and everybody geeked out over it, we're like, okay, let's step on the gas. Let's go crazy. <laughs> Another one, like, I think my moment where kind of like the light bulb went off for me was when Drago was expelled from the temple for the first time. And he's like, see you later, Dario. And next thing you know, you see a ball of fire. And I'm sitting at home going, he's a dragon. He re- really is a dragon. <laughs> and it's like that moment of realization that there was this, this whole that the boundaries were so far out there compared to everything. Yeah, that was that was a fun one. We kind of played with a lot of different ideas on how to shoot that. I initially wanted them to to um, to do it from Drago's POV, like like he would be walking out and he would walk through the thing, and then we were going to have a drone, you know? And so it was going to, you're going to see Drago walking through the doors, and it was going to cut to his POV, and his hands were going to open the curtains, and he was going to walk out, and then the drone was going to just take off, and we were going to hear the dragon <laughs> screech. <you know? laughs> Uh, that was my original idea, you know, that I was pushing Chris on. But but Skip has certain production uh, 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 parameters, and he, you know, he, I wouldn't have thought of the fire, and, and you know, that was that was Skip, and and uh, uh, so so, you know, 
you get in there and you, you know that's when you just kind of present you sort of say hey how about something like this and then you let skip um add his magic to it you know and he there, there's a couple of really genius ads that he did like the um the season two open uh, where where vampiro was in the um oh the dream sequence yeah, oh, he's the one God. that thought of the thought of. He's originally it was just written with the dialogue as is, but Skip came up with this great idea. What if he has this fantasy of lurching, jumping over the table, and ripping the throat out of uh, Doctor Johnson, <laughs> who's, who's Anthony <laughs> Jensen, who's one of our co-EPs? Actually, he's a he's an actor turned uh, line producer, um, and uh, um, uh, that was all Skip, and, and none of us had even thought of that, and. and uh, um, when we saw what he shot, we were like, oh, God bless Skip. That was genius. <laughs> and I, I remember, like, after let's, all of season two, I was looking to see if Vampiro was actually taking his meds. It <laughs> <laughs> was, was another Skip, uh, DJ and I fought over that for like two weeks. Do we show him throw, throw out his meds in the first episode? Does he keep him around? Does he throw him out? I don't know. We just kind of went back and forth on it. And, uh, you know, sometimes sometimes he's right on these things. Usually he's right. Occasionally I'm right, but usually he's right. <laughs> so we, we kept him around. We kept him uh, uh, floating around, uh, you know, and then when he throws him out, we, you know, that's when you knew shit was going down. We were getting crazy, man. <laughs> I love it. Uh, we do have uh, a couple of questions here in the chat. Yes. I want to I want to touch on here. Uh, Tonio Tonio is asking. I feel like we I feel like this discussions maybe happened with the Joseph before. Uh, but he's a uh, is Lucha Underground Temple uh, related to the From Dust Till Dawn Temple uh, that is underneath the Titty Twister crossover imminent? We I think didn't we discuss like some crossover yeah, because, possibilities well, before? Because in my head canon, and I, I know I've done, I know I've discussed discussed this with Chris. In my head canon, Dario Cueto owned the bar in From Dust Till Dawn. But that got too hot for him, so he went into like building an underground fight club instead. Yeah, like, you know, like that's my head cannon. <laughs> I like your head cannon. Uh, <laughs> I don't think, you know, uh, these are great that we're even having these kind of discussions. Was it ever intended that way? No. Um, could, could an origin story uh, uh, touch into some of those Rodriguez-y elements. I would love it. it I think it would be awesome. I don't. I don't know that that any of us were the, as confident that that we would be able to make sense out of this whole Lucha Underground thing. Um, you know, it's been a pleasant surprise, uh, but it was never. It was never um, intended to be a crossover. But but you know, we took so much inspiration from from Robert's movies and from. Uh, uh, from dusk till dawn, you know, which was the banner show on the LRA network. And, 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 uh, you know, when, when you're doing a wrestling show for Robert Rodriguez, you do a wrestling show that looks like a Robert Rodriguez movie, you know I mean? And, and that was, that was sort of first and foremost on everybody's mind going into this. Um, and, and I knew some people who had worked with Robert, um, and, you know, and so I went to them for some advice and they were just like, he just, this guy just kept telling me the same thing. He says, don't ever do anything because that's how it's done. He's like, just, he goes, put that out of your head. He goes, he goes, the only thing that Robert will, will, will ask is, has this been done before? And then if you, if you say, no, it's not been done before, he will usually say, okay, cool. Let's give it a try. Um, so, you know, that, that's incredibly freeing if you think about it, you know, it, it's, uh, it's very creatively freeing, but it's also kind of daunting because, you know, when something hasn't been done before, you don't know if it's actually going to work. Mm-hmm. Um, so and we're not, believe me, we're, we're, we're not, we absolutely are not, you know, we don't bat a thousand on Lucha Underground. We, we, you know, we have, we have plenty of swings and misses. Yeah. I mean, but that's, that's, I don't that's remember any motion. <laughs> I mean, so, you're also talking to guys who have ranked Lucha number one pretty much every week it's been on. Yeah, we're, we're loyal soldiers. Um, what's the craziest fan theory you've ever heard from someone who watches the show? Oh, wow. Uh, other than the whole Rodriguez thing that we just discussed? <laughs> I mean, if, if that's the craziest one you've crazier heard, out there than Garza and Mike. So. If that's the craziest was, one you've heard, I'd really love to take credit for that. <laughs> there, there are some really good ones. Like I'm, I, I, I'm drawing a blank. I remember that. Like sometimes, I the, more than once, uh, I've called DJ and said, "Look at this tweet. It's kind of genius. I wish we'd thought of this." <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so uh, 
it's definitely uh, uh, the, 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 like the fans get it. Like, you know, there's been more than one fan theory that I would have happily embraced. I'm, well, I'm, just, I'm drawing a blank on what the really crazy ones are. Damn, if, I, if we tweet anything that you happen to like and enjoy, feel free. My favorite, favorite thing. Favorite. <laughs> yes. Yeah, feel free, we will. We will use it and, and take credit for it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Uh, so uh, we, so we, we have Lucha we coming have up Lucha tonight. tonight. In one hour. Night long. Night long. Night long. Yes. Um, Fun episode. Um, do we get some, we sort, get of some sort of resolution for what happened with Matanza? Where did we last leave Matanza? Do we get it tonight? And this um, is, and I, uh, you know, this is what we were talking about when the show started. I this this Ray kind Ray kind of threw him through editing six the, months ago. Ray kind of threw him through the temple. Oh right, 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 right. Yeah, that's right. Um, I'm trying to think. If we don't think we get it. No, well, I'm well. This is a one match, one hour episode. So um, it, it's pretty much uh, all all Johnny and Mac uh, all hour today. It, like like everything, everything we will deal with every open story point. You know, we didn't plan to have this hiatus. So um, you know, we didn't know that at this point, um, we didn't know that at this point we would have been off the air for three months. That was never part of our storytelling arc you know, to put this big of a pause in. If we had known, we probably would have stacked the episodes a little bit differently. Um, but, uh, um, you know, in looking at the season, this felt like a good place, you know, when they decided they wanted to push the back half of the season so that it aired over the summer. Um, uh, this was sort of like uh, the arbitrary place where we said, okay, yeah, let's do it right before so we have something to promote, uh, which is the all-night-long match. So tonight is all about... Uh, uh, Johnny and um, the Mac, two of my favorites, um, and they don't disappoint. They, you know, uh, Willie Mac is a uniquely is a unique talent, and um, uh, how he does the stuff he does and looks the way he does is one of the great mysteries in wrestling. So uh, he doesn't disappoint. He's spectacular. <laughs> Vampiro is 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 a walking talking gimmick. He is he is. One of those people in wrestling that when you've and now I've known him for three years and he is one of the great characters in wrestling, Vampiro. If you ever get a chance to go out drinking and and you know the stuff he says on on an, on the announce table is the stuff he says when you're hanging out at the bar or, or at a restaurant with him. It's the same kind of weirdness, and uh, he's just um, he's hilarious and and, and I, I find him completely entertaining. And I hope you guys do too. I know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, yeah. He was on. He was on. Um, and he told us to eat a bag of dicks, which was oh, great. You don't. You have no idea. I've watched Vampiro at 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 the Juggalo <laughs> Championship Wrestling at the Gathering since like 2001, right? I, I've watched his band perform, right? And, and to hear him call, tell Mike to eat a bad, bag of dicks on the show when I was listening <laughs> back just was the biggest pop from my end. Um, but. The- there's a new look vampiro uh, coming up in season four. He Ooh. he uh, he, Ooh. he went on a vegan diet. And he dropped like ninety pounds. Wow! And, wow, that's uh, awesome. He, yeah, he grew his hair out, and he's got that skinny, uh, pretty boy vampiro rockabilly look that that uh, that uh, crushes it with the ladies. You know, so he's he's back to that look. Back to the heartthrob. Is is, yeah. is this going to be feeding into his uh, story somehow in season four? Um, you know, we always find a way to feed it into the story, but, but, you know, he, he, uh, um, he has, he has a good, uh, having just finished Ultima Lucha Trace, uh, two weeks ago, you know, that one, that episode is fresh in my mind. So, uh, there's, there's some good stuff there. Uh, so how many more episodes do we have of season three? Uh, 20 more episodes. Oh, um, and, and then, oh uh, man, it's going to be a good summer. Yeah. And then the, <laughs> last, the last one is the last episode is a two hour. So yes. I think it's every Wednesday until like October, middle of October. Oh, wow. perfect. Right in time for New York Comic Con if you guys want to come back to that again. Oh, I would love to come back to that again, actually. <laughs> that was so fun. That was a, that was a good time. That was a Except good this time, time we have to put on a match. I mean, like if we're going to come back this time, we have to put on a show. And I would love to go to that show because I, I have tickets for New York Comic Con already, you know, just just in case. All right. <laughs> in case. There you go. Is there anything so, um, um, touring in the works that you've done? 
guys have done a show here or there, but you I mean, know that you'd have to bring Dorian Roldan on 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 here and, and and ask him. That's specifically what he's sort of taking on. I mean, you know, it's one of those things that um, uh, I don't know the answer to that. To be honest, um, I've heard some things, um, but I don't want to. I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to make a liar out of myself if they don't happen. So, um, mm-hmm. you know, we all know that that's, that's the missing piece. Um, I, I know that the, the partners have been looking to bring in a, um, a sponsor. Um, but now we're getting close to the time where um, uh, we need to start gearing up for season four. Um, we're mm-hmm. waiting on the official announcement, but there's nothing that leads me to think that that won't happen soon. Um, uh, and so, you know, as far as I'm concerned, you know, everybody is – is uh, getting ready to show up uh, back at the temple in the fall. And I know like down in Mexico, there's been a lot of, I don't want to call it upheaval, but a, a lot of shuffling in the deck with different organizations lately. Yeah. I'm that's curious what that's meant for you guys. You know, for the TV show, it, it, it doesn't, I mean, it, as far as I'm concerned, um, you know, and, and, you know, my job is really to protect the television show above all else. And, uh, you know, whereas, you know, I want to be a good partner to Dorian and to um, the guy, the other owners. And, you know, I always will be. And and uh, um, but, you know, I look at the television show as something that's separate from both any kind of the, the LLC or AAA or touring or anything like that. And, you know, I, I'm you know fiercely protective of the 43 to 45 minutes that air on television every week. Um, beyond that, I don't get overly involved. Um, I, I have reached out to the parties that you're, uh, you know, talking about, and they've assured me that they uh, plan on honoring their Lucha Underground contract and, and reporting uh, to Boyle Heights in the fall when we need them. So I'm, I'm expecting it. Um, and, uh, and, you know, and, until I hear otherwise, uh, you know, we're, we're full steam ahead with the, with the roster we have. Excellent. Um, so... What has been your favorite part from season three so far? Has it been like the stuff with Drago, like Cobra Moon taking him hostage, or you haven't seen it yet? Okay, okay. Um, there, there's a match uh, at uh, Ultima Lucha Trace, which is is one of those ones where it's only happened to me like twice before, where I watched it and I was so um, disturbed by it that I didn't. <laughs> I like, I didn't know if it was great, if it was the greatest thing I'd just seen or the most horrific thing I'd, I'd just seen. And the two, <laughs> the, the, the two times that happened before were the uh, original grave consequences <laughs> match. Um, and then the, uh, the Vampiro uh, Zero Miedo match. <laughs> so the match I'm talking about that happens at Ultima Lucha Trace is of that ilk. It is in that category. Oh, and man. and I and I literally just said I don't know if I should quit my job and uh, uh, go work with orphans in Bangladesh for the rest of my life, you know, and, and devote myself to doing good because what I just saw really upset me and disturbed me. And I, and I, <laughs> I, oh, I, so Chris, Chris has alluded to this also, and I I'm not going to try to spoil. It felt I, I evil. Know what it you're felt, talking. Yeah, it just felt like oh my god, what did I just see? And, and it was and it, it was it was. I had a I had a, a a friend in the audience who was convinced that there was no way that human beings could bleed that much and still be walking oh and still be walk, and still be walking around, and I I had to bring him backstage and show him the gaping wounds on these individuals before he would believe that it was real blood. Oh um, my so it, it, it's crazy, it's crazy, and then there's some funny storylines in three, uh, some with Marty the Moth that is just so creepy and awesome and hilarious that um we'll get hate mail and uh um uh, but people will will, will laugh well, I'll, I'll, like because marty got kidnapped by mariposa last time we left him so i'm i re- i'm like marty's been one of my favorite under the radar characters of lucha mm-hmm. he just, just gets get- better and better like i was all all uh all, all spring along when we were cutting those episodes i would just text him and i go i just saw the vignette you did you know, with so-and-so and so-and-so, and and I can't stop laughing, and you're hilarious. And, and, uh, uh, you know, he shot those like a year ago, so he hasn't even seen, he doesn't even barely remember what it is. And I'm like, oh, no, remember that whole thing? And he's like, oh, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, It it goes to some very weird places. Needless to say, 
Uh, if Robert were to, to step forward and say, has this ever been done in wrestling before? The answer would be no. <laughs> Very confidently, no. Hey, I, I, I do have to get a question. This is a kind of a, a more general wrestling question uh, from Brandon out there, but uh, you know, I've got to get it in here for him. He's asking about Johnny Mundo. Uh, you know, do, do, do you kind of envision him like a John Cena in WWE? Like, he's wondering if he's going to get a lot of, you know, will he get a lot of title shots like Cena does? Actually, he does get a lot of title shots from what I've seen so far of lucha underground so i mean he's kind of the pretty boy guy right i mean you know he's he's um uh, he's he's great i mean he's he's such a utility player you need him to be part of a a, a tag team he can be part of a tag team you need him to be in a faction to be a faction individual guy he can work with every luchador he can work with the big guys he can work with the little guys he is he is just uh unbelievably valuable um you know he, he's a great the whole the whole thing with Worldwide Underground is is probably the funniest faction that that we've built up to this point, and they play a very big part in the back half of season three. Mm-hmm. And you know, you almost I hope they don't break up, you know, just because they're just too funny. If we just keep you know PJ and Jack from killing themselves, I think I think <laughs> uh, you know we'd keep them together for a while. Uh, yeah, um, but yeah. but yeah, he's he's just such a a, a valuable um, player for us that uh, and he never complains. And he never, he never, uh, he's never a problem. And, you know, when he has an idea, he says it. And, you know, every time he has an idea, it's good, you know. And so, um, you know, we, we, I, I think Mundo is fantastic. I think, he, I think he's uh, a brilliant talent for us. And, and we, we will work with him as long as he wants to. I have a side question to that. Have you watched his movie yet? Yes, I've seen it twice. Boone the Bounty nice, Hunter. Nice, nice. It's on my it's on my watch list. Uh, I gotta get through season three first. Uh, <laughs> so. Stop what you're doing now and go watch. Boone. I I told them to just not go to sleep last night and just watch. All I, I tell of you what, no, literally, as I'm sitting here because I noticed it didn't go through before. I I bought season three as we're sitting here on iTunes so I can watch it. It is there. I am set. I will nice. try to get at least an episode in tonight uh, before I go to bed. I, I have Excellent. I. Have have a trip coming up next week. I was so I'll say, Sorg, Sorg, you have a couple eight hour bus rides ahead of you. I'm I have an saying. eight hour bus ride ahead of me. <laughs> I got like five nights in Peoria. I don't think there's going to be anything else to do. Lucha Underground's happening in the hotel room. Lots of yelling. Yeah, unless, uh, unless Wade's uh, World is on, there's nothing to do in Peoria. Exactly, exactly, <laughs> right? So we got our context down. But, anyways. Good. Um, no, the bounty, Boone the Bounty Hunter is uh, Boontastic. It's. it's, it's <laughs> It's, it's, it's everything you want it to be and so much more. And there's cameos from some of your favorite people in it. Uh, Lorenzo Lamas actually has a small oh, part in it. Geez. And, oh, jeez. The renegade man. himself? Sorg hasn't gotten there yet. No? I got his career revival. And if I can just drop one name, yes. the adult Jonathan Lipnicki. If that means anything to you. Oh my God! The Wait. human head oh, weighs yeah. five pounds. As no. an adult. <laughs> ah, yes. Yes. <laughs> hold on. You hold doing? On. You guys see the face that Missy's making right now? <laughs> does he get to go to the zoo? Does, does uh, no? He does, does not get to go to the zoo. It. But, that fucking but, zoo is always closed. <laughs> I, I mean, I want. I is it a spoiler if I spoil Boone the bounty hunter? Like I don't. <laughs> Wait, did you did you wait wait did you sign a contract like when we have to come into the temple? <laughs> let, me, let me just okay. Is there an NDA for Boone the Bounty Hunter? Okay, Mundo, I apologize if I'm ruining something. But the adult Jonathan Lipnicki kills a hooker in Boone the Bounty Hunter. <laughs> oh my god. Oh damn, oh, I'm gonna god. have to pay my are, is that on iTunes? Because I'm just gonna go ahead and buy that now too. Yes. I mean uh, while well, I'm in here. It's on Amazon. Oh, I geez. think it's on Amazon and iTunes. So I uh, Mundo, I think I just sold at least a hundred copies for you. <laughs> I think you did. I think you did. And I mean, you know, if you wanna come on, if you're upset about the spoiler, we will love to have you on, Johnny mm-hmm. Mundo. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. It's all about the slam town. Yes, we have so I, many. I would let Johnny Mundo come on and just play random musical instruments for an hour. Can we just? You will find that for, for he, is, he is the nicest person you will ever have on the show, and you'll be disappointed by the, his niceness. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so yeah, we we, we've yeah. heard stories. I know he's hung out with our, our friend of the show, uh, Eamon, down there in Texas a bit, and and we heard great things about that. So, um, actually, uh, uh, Ray Zombie, we had on a little bit ago, did did some of his parkour video stuff uh, at one point uh, in life. So, 
Uh, okay. I hear great, awesome, awesome things about that guy. All right. Well, I, I hate, we could go on for for hours at this point, but we could go <laughs> all night. Uh, long. Yes, yes. But some of us, some of us. Okay, me. I'm waiting till the morning at least. I uh, have about 45 minutes until that uh, that Lucha Underground um, uh, premiere, and it won't affect ah. your numbers. So, uh... <laughs> and, you know, you, you might have to reset your TiVo because uh, I think on Directv it has it listed as a repeat, which oh, is a no. bad thing. Oh, that's not good. Yeah. I'll, I'll check mine too because I'm gonna be watching hockey tonight. But good, after, good. right play, after, I'll be watching Lucha Underground. Let's, let's make sure that it's set to record. Because put a PSA out on Twitter. I retweeted you, Chris. What's that? Chris DeJoseph actually sent out a tweet when we were talking, starting the show. Yeah. And I did retweet that throughout our. Oh, the the our the, the, the yes. PSA on Direct TV. Yes. Awesome, so, awesome. So uh, we we yeah, doing a fan figured that out earlier today, and God bless the Lucha fans, man. They're the best. They it's they they. Oh, uh, yep, it's, it's, um, yep, wasn't recording on mine, so it is uh, recording now. That makes me nervous. I don't like to hear that. <laughs> oh, well. I'll also throw out that, um, uh, the, the way I've been watching Lucha for the last, uh, at least the last season, at least for all of season three, it's been on, uh, Sling TV. That's been a good deal for, oh, yeah, you yeah, know, that's true. Watching it, it's really. been a nice way to watch it, get it. So yeah, cool. um, I actually I had to do the free trial of Sling was that when I was at San Diego Comic Con last year to watch Ultima Lucha Dos because I was talking to Pentagon, uh, uh, yeah, to um to Pentagon at Comic Con, so I was like, I need to know what happens on this <laughs> so I can talk to him about, it. and it's a damn good thing I did because I was introduced to Pentagon Dark. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Were you talking yeah. to him in Spanish or in English? Um, he spoke to me in Spanish, and there's a translator, a lovely, yeah. lovely yep, translator yep. there. That is the second time we've had to do an interview via translator. <laughs> so on this yeah. show, uh, so um, the other time was a Japanese yeah, it, it, guy. It was, it, was a, it was really, it was a fun interview. He kind of intimidated me a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Not gonna lie. <laughs> uh, another genuinely sweetheart of a guy. Uh, when you take the mask off, mm-hmm. right? <laughs> uh, Eric, we got a couple of standard questions. We we always like to ask on yeah. the way out for Indie Mayhem show. First of all, I, are you wa- what are you watching out outside of uh, uh, Lucha Underground and Boone the <laughs> Bounty Hunter? <laughs> That's got your attention in wrestling in the wrestling world these days. Any wrestlers out there? Any other shows that, that that's really uh, uh, you're, you mean, you're digging right now? Wrestling shows or, or, or shows otherwise? Uh, wrestling shows, indies, you know, I, whatnot. I don't anything watch, honestly. I I am. I do not watch any other wrestling product other than Lucha Underground. I mm-hmm. I, I I know that that's probably will will, will get me some hate, um, but but um, I you know I just I, I don't because I feel like you know um, you don't want anything to influence what you're doing, and you don't want uh, uh, you want your stuff to feel fresh, even if it's just fresh to you, you know. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, so I, I I really don't watch any of the other products. I mean, I don't even watch AAA. And and you know, occasionally we'll I'll look at some AAA videos if there's somebody who Dorian wants to put on the show. I'll I'll, I'll they'll say he'll send me some footage of somebody. But um, nothing in the wrestling space. You know, I I, uh, I I I've been I I go down these Donald Trump rabbit holes and stress out <laughs> over uh, uh, <laughs> over. Oh, uh, you know, I, I, I watch a lot of news these days uh, and, and uh, stay up late at night. I mean, it, I have a weird, I have a very unusual perspective on the entire thing. So, All right. um, you know, I, uh, I, I, I have a lot of some sleepless. <laughs> some sleepless. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, you know, okay, okay, I, 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 I think with that, and and I hate to go off the off the path on this one, but I, I think that it's, this may be more interesting of a question. Um, what was the best and the worst thing about working with Donald Trump, then future president Ooh. Donald Trump? <laughs> uh, I'm going to try to stay within the uh, w- within the range of my non disclosure agreement. Because- oh, okay. Oh, that's, that's true. That's true. Okay. 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 <laughs> Because, because clearly he will sue me if I say something. Uh, uh, yes, <laughs> or at the well, very he, least, he does it. watch the show. He does watch and, our and program, it's wrestling so. context because he is a Hall of Famer. So I mean, yeah, it, of course, it, it, it's, it's all it's, it's all saying. rich tapestry. Yeah, absolutely, everything's according connected. To him, according to him, because we did have a discussion once in the back of the limo about the Lucha Underground, and he was talking about WWE, and he says that he has the single most popular and. Uh, uh, program of all time in the wwe was what he did with uh vince mcmahon it was the highest rated ever 
the highest, you know, in highest rated WrestleMania, he claims that there was never any that was rated higher than him. Now, I'm going to leave that to the rest wrestling historians to authenticate. Um, would you guys care to comment? But that's, what I'm, that's his I, version. I think of the story. there is truth to that as far as the buy rate goes, but I think it's been eclipsed in recent years. But yeah, I think, I I think WrestleMania been. 32 killed it. But, um, but, but it definitely crushed someone, it. WrestleMania was huge. That was a big one. Yeah. Um, as someone who just recently watched all 32 WrestleManias to prepare for WrestleMania 33, um, his history with wrestling is – it, it it actually evokes a lot of his um a lot of his uh policies which well, is frightening right it, it, we <laughs> actually we actually the, 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 this connects too because we talked with the author of of Donald Trump is a pro wrestler i believe the name is where he it, the, the book is uh looking at the paths of Vince McMahon and Donald Trump and his path to the presidency uh and it was put out like late last year so no absolutely it, it completely goes and along with it they're quite good friends. I mean, I, oh, yeah. I, I know that they, they were speaking to each other on a regular basis. And, uh, um, you know, I think Donald hired his wife, right? And so, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. you know, I mean, look, the, the, he, he, he is the, none, none of the stuff that's happening now is surprising to me at all. Um, you know, we saw, I, I, I watched him tweet many, many, many times. And it's exactly as frantic and crazy and as uh, undisciplined as, as it comes off. Um, but the stakes are a lot higher now, uh, and uh, <laughs> the, the the targets are a lot more diverse now than they used to be. I mean, I watched him go on a, like a five tweet tirade against Richard Belzer once, and it was about the weirdest, funniest thing I'd ever seen. And uh, so I, I know that he does a very stream of consciousness, and I've seen it happen. So um, you know, it, 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 what what makes a good reality TV host doesn't always make a good leader of the free world, and I think. Um, <laughs> I, I, th- oh, I think uh, that's, that, and I um, think that's the quote all, of the episode. I mean, I was going to say that I, that might be the pull quote. That I mean, might be the pull quote. <laughs> but you know, he was a, he was a very good host of a reality TV show. I'll give him that. <laughs> no, the numbers don't lie. That's, he, that's he, right. Yeah, he, number one show. He, he one wasn't. Show, uh, he was an adequate wrestling problem. manager. <laughs> he was an, when he couldn't remember the name of his opponent. Um, that's, that's, you know, Bobby does, Lindsay, Bobby Lindsay does, was offended. I think he does tell a funny story about how he made, um, he told me this story once and I actually thought it was pretty funny. He, he made, he was worried that they were going to shave his head and he was convinced that, that they were going to, um, swerve him and shave his head and there would be nothing he could do about it. So mm-hmm. he made Vince sign something like a hundred million dollar uh, uh, insurance policy that he wouldn't shave his head and literally had lawyers draft up an agreement that if he shaved Donald Trump's head, Vince would have to uh, give him a hundred million dollars. <laughs> and, wow. and, and you know, and, I, uh, the, the funny part is, is he says what I, so I, I looked at, and I forgot who was it. That was the, uh, that was next one. It was uh, the big dude. Umaga. Um, Umaga. Yeah. He goes, I'm stupid. I should have paid that guy $50,000 to knock me down and shave my head. Because <laughs> I would have I I made a killing off of it, but but uh, yeah, he was terrified that they were going to swerve him and shave his head for real. Oh god, That's that so would have been amazing. <laughs> that wow. So Fantastic. it really, so it really is real to him. <laughs> I guess. I mean, who knows if that's true, but that's the story he told me. That's Ooh. that seems yeah, Eric. That's unnerving. Eric, we have learned a lot tonight <laughs> with you. Oh, can I ask um, one more? Can I ask one quick question? Oh, yeah. real one, quick. One question. One sentence answer. What's your all-time favorite reality show that you did not work on? Oh, uh, Joe Schmo. Oh, that was good. Oh. Yes, that was fun. Nice. He's from the, the 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 first season there. Yeah, first yeah. season. He's from so he's from he's from down the road. <laughs> so, so good. So it was good. good. It, it was, was good. That that one I loved, and um, this is kind of a depressing one, but it, it, it gives you a peek into my soul. I love intervention. <laughs> I love that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh jeez, my my favorite I, one was the mole. I love the mole back. Oh yeah, there. Stephen Baldwin, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that was geez. that was an early wave. That was back in the early days. Not, not to yeah, mention, yeah. many on this crew have a have an addiction to Big Brother, so. I, I hate Big Brother, and I get in this fight with DJ Roach all the time. I hate, I hate that show. I hate it, hate it, hate it, hate it. But you know, teaches on. I'm glad. And look, here's the thing: 
I'm glad that Big Brother's still on the air. I'm glad that The Bachelor's on the air. And, and you know, I sort of changed my attitude when it comes to wrestling. I want as much wrestling to succeed as possible in the same way that I want as much reality TV to succeed as possible. It's good for all of us when there's choices and when there's a lot of uh, options. It's good for the people who work in the business. It's good for the talent. It's good for everybody. And so, you know, I want every wrestling show to succeed and I want every reality TV show to succeed as well. So, you know, let's go out there and make great television, people. Excellent. I agree. Eric, thank you so <laughs> much for joining us. Thank All you, right. Matt and Mike. Thank, thank you, Matt Carlins, for joining us uh, and, and being part of this interview as well. Uh, but uh, can, where can people uh, uh, find you out lo- online and, and, and give you their uh, Lucha Underground fan theories? <laughs> <laughs> Me? Um, you know, I'm not much of a, a social media, but I'm at uh, Eric Ben Wagonen at Twitter. On, uh, my Twitter handle is at Eric Ben Wagonen, and that's probably the best way, or you can just, you know, m- mail me an envelope to the <laughs> temple. <laughs> the care of Just Dario a blank Cueto. envelope that says, the temple care of Dario Cueto. It's like, <laughs> it's the, like the North Pole and Santa Claus, really, uh, <laughs> in the long run. Yeah. Like, the post office will figure it out. Uh, yes. it's, a, it's a dark magic in that uh, but uh, anyways thank you so much Eric for joining us check out Lucha Underground buy it on iTunes watch it on Netflix Sling TV however you're doing it uh, I, I hope that our campaign to just leave Lucha Underground on in the background forever uh, to help them on Netflix has has helped out that uh, in your cause I know Netflix won't tell you uh, but uh, yes. uh, thank you thank you so much it's been an awesome conversation Awesome. Guys, thank you so much and enjoy the show. I'll, I'll check in later. See how you're tweeting. All right. Oh, yeah, I'll be I'll be tweeting later tonight and we'll also have the midweek war tomorrow. And, and night, I'll so. be live tweeting my from episode one of season three as I go here so you can watch my progress. Um yes. <laughs> Because yeah, that's always always fun, and and of course, knowing the context of what I've seen at the tapings, it's it's going to be. I've, I've, yeah. I can't wait for this. It's still so funny how he Sorry. is the only guy that's simultaneously ahead and behind on Lucha Underground. Yeah, yeah, I love this like time warp. <laughs> kind of weird. Uh, thank, thank you, you, everybody else. Uh, hit us up if you have any other questions, anything else, anything else we should have on. Should we have Eric back on the show? Hit us at Good Times at Wrestling Mayhem Show. Uh, dot com and four one two two zero six WMS zero. Uh, subscribe to Indie Mayhem Show on all your iTunes and and other podcatchers. Support the show. Uh, and in the meantime, support indie wrestling and support Lucha Underground above all else. See you guys next time. Oh. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.